Hello and welcome to our procedural content generation part two. Uh, in the first episode, we went through the basics of the PCG and talked about how to actually procedurally generate content. Uh, in this episode, we're going to start looking into it a little bit deeper uh, by first of all starting off with splines. So we're going to look at how to use splines and how you can use splines to generate content um, in interesting patterns. So let's check it out. So last time we went through the basics of the procedural generator. Uh, today we're going to go through creating one from scratch, but this time we're going to look at creating a spline based one. So let's go ahead and create a new actor for our procedural generation. So it's not just this volume thing that you're seeing uh, from last time. You could do this to any actor you wish. So here we're going to do a PCG wall, uh, procedural content generation for wall and open this up and inside our wall here we're going to add a spline and we're also going to add a PCG procedural content generation click on this the procedural content generator will look at whatever actor it's attached to and then report back the surface or the spline attached to the actor and we'll use that as the points generation for the system. So on the PTG here, and on the right hand side, you can see uh, the graph that we want to use. And the graph is set to none currently. So I'm going to create one from scratch. So let's go ahead and go in here and see PCG, PCG graph. And we'll just do a wall graph and open it up. Okay, so this is what a blank one looks like. We have an input and output node, and we're gonna start off by simply getting a sample of the shape we wanna have. So samplers are, as you see in this list of options here, are down here where you'll see sampler, and you can do all sorts of things from a sampler node. Uh, what we're doing here is looking at a spline sampler. So I'm gonna drag that out. And this is gonna ask for a spline, and the spline we're gonna give it is gonna come from the actor that we're passing through in here okay so we can just pass through the actor into the spline and it now we'll look for a spline component on our actor in this case the wall here and the sampler's job is to place these debug point meshes um or points rather across a shape in this case a spline and you can look at this in debug if we go over here to the right hand side and scroll down you'll see debug and you can turn it on and you can see it's going to generate these little cubes along the spline here so let's take a look at what that looks like inside here so let's save this go to, back to our pcg wall and on the pcg component we're going to go to the right hand side graph and choose our pcg wall graph and hit compile and save let's close that and now we can put that actor into our world here Okay, so if I can now click on my spline and stretch this out, you can now see it doing something on the graph here. We can see it now generating along our graph and we can make another point and you can see it generating these shapes along here. Okay, so there's the debug generating those points. So let's just undo that. There we are. And let's now go back to our graph and now give it a natural mesh to use. So we're going to, uh, no, that's fine. And go in here and turn off the debug. We don't want that anymore. And now we're going to do a a, a, a mesh to spawn in. So we're going to do static mesh spawner. And so spawners are the things that spawn items on our objects, on our points. So if I scroll down here, you can do create points, grid, or spawn actor, or spawn mesh. We're going to do a spawn mesh spawner. So the out goes into the in from the spline sampler into the spawn mesh spawner, uh, state mesh spawner. Now with that selected, as I showed you last time, you can go over to the right hand side and give it some mesh entities. We can click on the plus icon to set those mesh entities. So I'm going to go in here, and we're going to just choose a rock. Uh, rock boulder A, that'll do. And actually, let's do one that's not mossy. Let's do this one. There we go. And hit save. 
Now the spline sampler, when I drag this out, you can see it really spawning one in. And if I, what's this one over here? If I got two by accident. There we go. And drag the wall back out. There we go. So on here, I can click on our spline, drag this out, and that can add two splines, two, uh, two along our spline. But as you can see, if I go out further and further, it doesn't add any more. Now, why is that? Well, what it's actually doing at the moment is spawning one per point. So you see it's one point there, another one on that point there, which is maybe something that you want to try and do. But let's say we want to spread it out evenly across our segment here. So we're going to go back to our graph, go back to the spline sampler, and on here on the right-hand side, we can change how it's dividing up the spline. So I can go to the dimension on spline, but the mode I can change to distance base rather than subdivision base. So if I do it by distance base, you can see here I can do distance increment and I can set up how far away each one's going to spawn in. Now, immediately, if I leave it at 100, you'll see what happens. It's going to spawn loads of them. Okay, and it's going to follow the spline as I move the spline around. If I drag the spline out like that, rotate it around, you get this effect. Obviously, that's kind of nuts. It doesn't look right because they're all too tight. So let's go into our graph and fix that. So distance increment here is 100. We're going to change this to be a bit higher. Let's do this as, say, 250. And check out the result. That's looking a bit better. But as you can see, what's happening with the boulders is they're all facing the same way. They're all following the spline. So what we're going to do is we want to manipulate the points that are generated on our spline. Now, the points on the spline are automatically assigned to the direction of the spline. So that's why our boulders here are following the spline, which again, maybe something you want to do, but in our case, we don't. So what we can do on our graph here is we're going to randomize that a little bit. And so if you drag out from the out here, before we spawn it in, you drag it out and type in transform. And you're going to see transform points. Let me click on this and plug that in there. Now the transform points, let's just, there you go. Transform points allows us to randomize how the uh, the points uh, are rotated, or moved, scaled, etc. So over here on the right hand side, we've got offset minimax. This changes the translation of these things of so where they are positioned as an offset. Uh, the rotation minimax, this is obviously the rotation and scale is the scale. I want mine to rotate a little bit. So I'm going to go to rotation minimax and I'll do on the zero here minus 180. And on the Z on the max, I'm going to do 180. So I've got a full 360 degree rotation on my points. So now each boulder here is randomized which way they are rotated along our spline. But maybe you don't want it to follow the spline perfectly. So let's add a little bit of an offset to this. So my offset minimax, we're going to affect the Y first of all. So the Y we're going to do minus 50 and then maximum 50 in the Y axis. And what that should do is it affects it on the horizontal tangent or perpendicular sorry, to the spline. X is going to change the forward and back on the spline. Y is going to change the left and right on the spline. And Z obviously does the up and down on the spline. So now we've got this nice effect of the rocks being built around like this. Okay, not too bad, but let's mess about the sizing a little bit because rocks all look in the same size does look a bit odd. So let's go to our scale min and scale max. I'm going to leave scale uh, max as 111, but scale min, I'm going to change this. And I'm going to change min here to 0 0.7. Uh, and that should be across all of them. And so now we've got slightly different sizes for each one. So again, let's randomize this a little bit more and let's change the offset on the X axis a little bit too. Now, not too much because otherwise they might clip into each other. So we go max offset, min and max. We're going to do, uh, let's do uh, minus 10 and 10. Okay, not looking too bad. Now, alongside 
using our transforms to randomize their location and placement. We can also randomize what objects they're using. So this is rock boulder B1. Let's go and add another one to this. So let's go to my index here. And we're going to go descriptor and do boulder and do B2. And do another one for boulder B3. So I've got three different rocks that could possibly be op optioned here. And as you can see, it's now going to randomize which rock is being used where. And it's looking pretty good. And there you go. And that's how we can use a spline to manipulate and generate along that spline. And also how to get started by using the graph. Now, this is just the beginning of using the graph. There's obviously a lot more nodes to go through. And we'll start going through a lot, a lot more. But the ones we've gone through today are the, probably the main ones you're looking at using. Um, but we'll evolve this a bit further and do a bit more on it as we go. So there you go. Splines are really useful. We can do lots of cool things with them. Um, there's more, even more options you can do with them, uh, which we'll no doubt show at some point in a later video. But uh, that'll do for now. And in this next episode, we're going to go diving in a bit more into those procedural content graphs and talk about how we can use it to create more interesting uh, geometry. So you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.